guess what? It's snowing! I woke up this morning and I looked out the window and it was snowing and that is just so exciting because we don't often get it here. So I've got my boots on, I've got my flask of hot chocolate and I'm going to go down to the river to see what's going on down there. So come along with me and let's go and see how the River Thames is looking with a little bit of snow. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are down on a very cold and blustery foreshore. It's not exactly covered with snow down here, but it is very cold and there are snowflakes, so it is actually snowing. I don't know if I'm going to find a great deal because actually it's quite a high low tide. I'm going to have a look and see what I can find. But I do have some footage from previous snowy mudlarking sessions, so I may throw in a few of those just to remember those lovely snowy moments I've had on the foreshore before, which you might not have seen. And also, because it's Valentine's Day today, or at least it will be when I put this video out, I'm going to have a look in my studio for some of my finds that are related to love. So today's video is going to be on the theme of snow and love. So what's not to like about that? But anyway, in the first instance, let's go and see if we can find anything. And also, I've brought along some bread for my friends, the swans and the ducks and the crows and the gulls, because I'm sure that they're going to appreciate a tasty little snack in this cold, wintry weather. So, let's go. Well, I have found a marble, if nothing else. Here we are, look, it looks like a cod bottle marble. Very nice it is too. Well, guess what? I've just seen something over there and I'm gonna zoom in on it and see how long it takes you to spot it. I just saw it as I was walking past. I haven't picked it up yet. Can you see anything yet? just in the middle there. It is a little face. Let's go and have a look. It's so funny, it just caught my eye as I was walking past. <laughs> Here we are, look at this. Hello. Hello, young man. <laughs> he doesn't look best pleased, does he? Well, what are you doing down here? He could be part of a religious offering. Well, you're coming home with me now. found a beautiful bottle, quite unexpected. 
it's just here. I had to struggle a bit to get it out, but it's actually an entire cod bottle, which is very quite unusual to find, to be honest. Um, often they were broken by children to get the marbles out, but this one is completely whole. So I'm utterly thrilled. At this point, I can't see what it says on top, uh, uh, says on it, so I'm going to need to give it a clean, but that is a beautiful specimen of cod bottle. Completely whole. Whole and muddy. The best way to be. Okay, I'm going to give this um, cod bottle a little wash off here in the river. See if we can see where it comes from. Let's see, I may have to try and get some of the mud out. Well, I have not been successful at getting the mud out. <laughs> it's pretty much jam packed in there. Plus, there's going to be a marble doing its job nicely and sealing the bottle up, but it's going to take a bit of work. But I can now read what it says a bit. Let's have a look. So, it says, this bottle is the property of Artis, Artis Capel and Company, Camberwell, S.E. No deposit charged. So that's what it says on that side, and on the other side it says... Okay, let's try to get it in focus. It says Ryland's Patent. Ryland Barnsley. Buying and buying or selling this bottle is illegal. I'll give it a better clean up when I get home. That's a beautiful bottle. Very unexpected find. Well, it's blizzarding quite strongly now. Um, the tide's on the turn, so I'll be heading back soon, but I've just spotted a coin down here. I can't see exactly what it is. It could be another token. So I'm going to have to give it a, a wash off when I get home and then photograph it later. I can't quite make out what that is. Um, just as I was putting my coin away, I just came across this as well, which is really nice. It's a tiny cufflink, and it's got an A in it. I think that's an A. Yeah, an A. How pretty.
take a look at the snow finds before we head over to the table of love over there. And some of the objects were found that day and others were found on previous trips. But anyway, let's have a look here. Um, now, first of all, I do love this little head. No idea where it comes from, but probably some form of religious offering, I expect. Here's my bottle, a lot cleaner than it was. And it has the, the cod bottle marble in there still, which is great. You can just see it there rolling around. And often children used to break these bottles to get the marbles out. And in fact, as you saw, I did find a couple of marbles over the last few days. And here they are, undoubtedly taken by children who broke the bottles. And you do find quite a few of those down on the Thames. And it's sort of rarer and rarer, really, to find these cod bottles intact. Now, the, the little token was a Titus Ward token, and he was a 19th century grocer. So a little token there to spend at the grocer's. And here we've got this lovely little sort of... Uh, Cufflink, could do with a clean really, and it does have on it A. Very fitting, A for amour. So it fits the theme of today's love theme very well, and you will of course have noticed my vaguely heart-shaped stones. Right, so now let's head over to this table, and I've laid out a little selection of objects which conjure up love for me and so obviously jewellery is one of those things and I do have quite a large collection of rings this is one of my favourites actually it's such a lovely heart-shaped stone now it's not a diamond um, but it's beautiful nonetheless and this is one of my favourites. It's uh, got a lovely blue stone in there, or it would have been lovely, and it's all smashed now. But for some reason, I don't know why, I find that these rings, which are bent out of shape and a little bit battered, been through the mill a bit, just quite poignant, really. It's a bit like um, love itself, isn't it? Going through uh, its ups and downs. So... Yeah, they, they of course each have a story. And they were once upon a time worn by people, maybe given to people as as gifts and declarations of love. So always always lovely to find a ring and to imagine the story behind it. Um, one of my other favourite rings is a beautiful sapphire and gold ring. And that was a very, very special find. So let's start over here. Now this is one of my favourite finds, which makes me think about love as well. It's a St Christopher's, but on the back it's got written Love Reg. Just simple and to the point, Love Reg. And I wonder if Reg was maybe a soldier in the war and whether he gave that to his sweetheart before he, before he left. So quite special, imagining the story behind that. This is another favourite. This is a bracelet with Peter and Leslie engraved on it with a heart in the middle. It looks kind of 70s-ish, doesn't it? And I wonder if Peter and Leslie are still alive and if they're still together and how it ended up in the river. This is an old brooch with some flowers seen better days. This lovely little bracelet here which I found very recently. This is a tiny little find which I love and I think it's a little cherub with his bow and arrow. I think anyway. It's hard to tell. But he's rather lovely. There's a little pin here which has mother on it which is very sweet and I can just imagine somebody giving that to their mum as a present. This little battered bracelet with baby on it 
it's just so so sweet isn't it given to a chubby little baby to wear by his loving parents um, of course we've got the heart symbol on these pipes now these pipes are from the odd fellows and the heart in the hand is one of their symbols and I think that this is probably the odd fellows as well moving on down here now this is a beautiful piece of glass and on it is a couple and it looks as if the man is perhaps proposing I'm going to hold it up to the light see if you can see it isn't that lovely Now, this little heart here, when I found it, it didn't have this silver on the back. It was very, very delicate. And in fact, I've got a photograph, so I'll put it up on the screen of how it was when I found it. But I liked it so much that I had a jeweler put some silver on the back. So now I wear this most of the time. And I used to have another tiny little heart that I found in the river on the chain as well, which unfortunately I lost again. So maybe one day I'll find it. But I wear that very often with a, with a pipe and another little heart here, which my mum gave me. Here we've got a little Eiffel Tower. I had to put that in because, of course, it's from the City of Love. What else? Um, I've got a couple of fragments of pottery here. It's a little family. I can't remember the name of the design, but it always makes me think of a of a happy little family. And I'm always so relieved when I find this little threesome here all together um, and that the little child hasn't been sort of cut off from the parents that the pottery hasn't broken in the wrong place. I also have another lovely heart which I found in the Thames mud. I can't find it. It's here in my studio somewhere and I put this here to remind me. I actually found this on the pavement um, and I'll put a picture up of my other Thames found heart. What else have we got here? Got this lovely little piece of pottery with a lady holding a baby. This lovely little crystal heart, which I sometimes keep in my pocket. It's always nice finding hearts. And what else? Oh yes. Now this is a Queen Victoria coin and it is dated 1861 and Queen Victoria always makes me think of love because she was so desperately in love with her husband Albert and they had such a, a very happy marriage and in fact I'm going to read you the diary entry that Queen Victoria wrote the evening after her wedding. I never, never spent such an evening. My dearest, dearest, dear Albert, his excessive love and affection gave me feelings of heavenly love and happiness I never could have hoped to have felt before. He clasped me in his arms and we kissed each other again and again. His beauty, his sweetness and gentleness. Really, how can I ever be thankful enough to have such a husband, to be called by names of tenderness, I have never yet heard, used to me before, was bliss beyond belief. Oh, this was the happiest day of my life. And in 1861, the year of this coin, that is when Albert died and she was absolutely heartbroken and she wore black for the rest of her life. Now over here in my button box there's just one more find that I want to share with you and it's here. It's a button from the East India United Services Club. Now why this button? Well 
It's really just an excuse to take you on another snowy walk through the forest. So get your snow gear on, come along with me, and I'll show you why. Today we're going to take a trek up through this forest and at the top there is a castle which was built in the 18th century by a woman who was grieving her husband. And that is Seven Droog Castle. So how does this little button from the East India Service Club and Seven Drew Castle and Love all link together? Well, I'm going to explain to you. In 1784, Lady Anne James had Seven Drew Castle built in memory of her husband, Sir William James, who was a member of the East India Company Navy. He was also a director and a commodore of the East India Company during his lifetime. He had a, a really long and thriving career in the East India Company, which was founded, by the way, in 1600 for trade in the Indian Ocean region. Now, he was particularly responsible for protecting the trade ships against piracy. And one of his main accomplishments was in 1755 when he captured the pirate stronghold, the Indian hill fort of Savannaderg. Now he actually came back to England and lived for many more years happily with Lady Anne James, but then he died very unexpectedly in 1783, leaving her absolutely heartbroken. And she really wanted something to remember him by, a permanent monument to his name. And so she had Seven Drew Castle built. And of course, Seven Drew Castle, the name is the anglicised version of Savannaderg. Now, even though the East India Service Club was actually created a lot later in Victorian times, I have no doubt whatsoever that Sir William James would have been a member because it was created exactly for people like him. So that's how this little button and Seven Drew Castle and love all fits together. Well, I hope you enjoyed that snow love Valentine's Day special, but as we all know, Valentine's Day is so commercial and I'm not a huge supporter of it, to be honest, despite the fact that I've just done this Valentine's Day special. I think we should celebrate love every single day, not just on Valentine's Day. So wherever you are, I wish you much love today, but I mostly wish you much love every single day. And uh, now my feet are really cold, my toes are cold. Um, these boots are used to walking in the mud, not the snow. And I think I need to get myself some thicker socks. So I'm off home now to have a cup of tea. And um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.